At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we have a very interesting topic with three beautiful ladies, and they are normally the ones that are doing the interviewing. So it's a little bit of role reversal. They have one of the number one sexuality podcasts, Clit Talk, and we're going to be talking about normalizing uh, taboo conversations and really empowering everyone about sex and desire. And I mean, that's such a Amazing to- conversation and topic. But so we have Lindsay, we have Katie, and we have Madison, aka Sugar. We'll see what she wants to go by as we dive into this podcast. But thank you all for joining. Thank you thank for you. having us. Yeah. And don't mind, so we we, we love role play, so we're excited. Ah, <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> ah. So, you know, I was reading a little bit up on, um, up on everybody's bios and you're so like diverse as far as like your backgrounds and everything, but you kind of came together and right before we even jumped on this, I don't know if we could share that or whatnot, but you said that I, I met Katie years ago at, at a house party that um, for, uh, her husband is uh, good friends with one of my ex-girlfriends and we were over there and bonded over landmark and so I was mentioning that and she said that this kind of whole your <laughs> podcast and and everything bloomed out of that and then I know that it's not limited to a podcast now now you even have a master class you all do coaching and one-on-ones with people so um yeah I want to hear how you guys came together for- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a good story actually <laughs> yes I'm all for it we've so never we actually I- Lindsay and I have known each other for like 15 years. We've been like besties forever. And okay. um, she was on tour with Ethan and Selena Gomez. She's a professional singer. Really incredible. We do lots of fun things with her voice on the show. Nice. I'm like her biggest fans. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. And then we all did a communication program, a two-year communication program at, um, at Landmark, uh, where we picked up Madison, a.k.a. Sugar, Nice. And, um, and pretty much after that, Lindsay and I threw Madison's bachelorette party. Mm-hmm. And at that party, she was gifted pussy a reclamation by Regina Thomas shower. And which is our started, Bible, by the way, that's our Bible. Really? I love it. And Lindsay was like, we should start a show called clip talk. I may have had a few margaritas at that point. I was like, clip talk. <laughs> We were talking about sex and all this stuff. And it was, it was really just like um, expansive. And there was a really like sisterhood available that we noticed. So we started a book club just reading this book. Wow. And um, we would call in, we were calling in every week. And um, Lindsay and I have worked in entertainment forever. So we were like, this is a show. Yeah, it so is. We started recording um, a podcast, basically. Mm-hmm. On a conference love- line. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow. I've mean, expanded but, beyond that now. <laughs> yeah. That was five years ago. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, but I love like hearing how things come together. Cause I think that when you find, like, I would say that with the success that you've achieved and how it's exponentially grown, I say, you know, from, from my point of view of looking at everything from a spiritual uh, level is like, that's part of your calling, right? You know, it's like when things just click, they just end up happening. Right. Yeah. And then, you, and then you go from, okay, just having a couple margaritas and a bachelorette party to, you know, making a show and then seeing where that goes and, and just expand, 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 expand and grow. So, I mean, I love hearing things like that because it feels like, you know, in, in our society and in today's day and age, people need to talk more about sex. They need to be more empowered. And I think that it's such a, like, even though it's like Western culture, you think that, oh, we're a little bit more open about sexuality and sensuality and that, but we're really not. No. You know? <laughs> and, it, and it's it's so funny. I'm so glad that, you know, we, we kind of opened up with the landmark for anyone who isn't familiar. It's it's what's considered like a transformational program. And the three of us and at Clip Talk and, you know, our, our graduates and our master class, like we really view sexuality as part of our transformation. Like I've done mm-hmm. a lot of transformational work, like you name it, I've done it. I've read all the books, I've done all the courses. 
Um, you really and there was still, there, yeah, I really have. <laughs> and there was still a missing piece for me. Yeah. And it really was the transformation of my sexuality and really honoring that voice, which we call like honoring your pussy for us, you know, I'm, I'm a cis female. And so, um, and so like listening to that, when I really started to listen to what my pussy was saying to me, mm-hmm. that's when my transformation really started to like generate at a level I had never experienced before. And that's well, actually a big part of when we do our live workshop at Liberate, what we're going to be uh, exploring and teaching that evening. <laughs> uh, yes. No, I, yeah, I mean, but it makes sense. I mean, mind, body, and soul. And then how many people have you know, I mean, I just find more and more individuals as I do therapy work and things like that, that so much sexual trauma, so much shame, Mm -hmm. so much, you know, like also cultural society, like feeling like you have to be this way or this way, but I might have other tendencies Mm -hmm. or other, other stuff. And, and that suppression and that guilt and that, you know, whatever really keeps people from being their true authentic self. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something that every human being has in common common is that we all have this sexual essence to us. We all came into life through that energy force and through that chakra. So we actually rose during the era of the Me Too movements was mm-hmm. also the timing. So when you talked about, you know, this, the, 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 the spiritual synapses going off here and everything was just like effortless, it was, and it was being called forth for us to bring into the world during a time where, Hashtag me too. Hashtag times up was yeah. just yeah. on the rise for that second, second rise here about five years ago. Yeah. We were and like halfway through season one when me too happened. We were like, yeah. what? We were like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we are on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right track at the right time, yeah. you know, and our sexual education for the most part has, it is so limited, you know, and that is something that's been a huge inspiration for us is like, well, we don't talk about sex and we Mm -hmm. then create our educational system based off of not talking about sex. Then all we were left to learn was don't do it. Don't get pregnant. Don't get an STD. We weren't taught how, where our clitoris is or how to touch ourselves or, you know, and so we're really on the cutting edge of the new conversation for sex education and talking about it is certainly the first place to start normalizing the pleasure education, right? (laughs) Yeah. And, and, and I was reading somewhere, um, maybe on your website or something that somebody, one of you didn't, didn't even start masturbating until quit talk, right? So (laughs) one in five women in America have never masturbated is a real really? statistic. And I was a 32 year old woman who didn't even know that women masturbated. No one ever talked to me about it. I was reading this book and I was like, it was a revelation to me. And at the time I had been laid up in bed for about eight months with a back injury. And mm-hmm. I had a slew of other injuries on the left side of my body, which is, you know, I learned is your feminine side. And, Mm -hmm. and I was really, you know, a career driven, really forcing through, um, with my masculine energy generally, Mm -hmm. not that I knew that I was doing that, but it really, it really led to me not honoring my body and had all these injuries to where I was starting a podcast called clit talk while I was laid up in bed and started masturbating. And then my back pain started to heal. Yeah, because all that better. Yeah, that make I mean it makes perfect sense from my point of view because <laughs> that stored up energy and that also that the the tension, the suppression, the whatever else of the reason why you were negating that aspect of yourself, known or unknown to you, you know. And as Madison was saying, you know, our our system, what do people actually learn in school or through, you know, it, it's so suppressed. Like parents don't talk to kids about sex. Mm -hmm. We're actually taught not to talk about sex, but no one ever probably told you don't talk about sex, right? It's just, just wasn't done in the air. It just wasn't done. (laughs) And it, um, it really leads to a lot of suppression and it really leads to a lot of sexual trauma, which is why Madison said earlier, something is really universal. We've found in our teaching. So, and then, um, and then that turn, and then that transmutes into like in our journey in when we started to have these conversations, like really what came up for all of us was shame. Yeah. 
Like there's and a real, anger. there's, there's a real trans like a real transformation around shame. And, you know, I was brought up in a household where I actually did talk about sex. My fam- my mom was a registered nurse. We were open about it. I had a healthy upbringing and still, you know, mm. the patriarchal world culture, I still had shame that like, I didn't even know was there. Mm. Wow. And yeah. so, so, so through this, I'm guessing that each of you had a transformational story while you were talking together, researching, interviewing some really cool, amazing people from all walks of life. You know, I mean, you interviewed doctors and celebrities and porn stars and everything in between. Right. And so what was if I could hear from each of you, what was some of your transformations in your own life that you went through? Mm. I'll kick us off. Go for it. Cause I'm the queerest one. So I'm just going to start here. Yes. <laughs> I was in, in a heterosexual monogamous marriage when I started this podcast. And if you listen to the journey of clit talk from season one through season five, which is about five years of content, you will hear all of our transformations. Like we are distinct human beings from that first episode and even season two and season three. So for me, I started this journey it, it closeted because I've always been what I would call bisexual, always liked ladies. Mm-hmm. The first people I played with were my little girlfriends, you know, and I was, I actually, as a child would lead like group masturbation circles in like the jacuzzi with my friends, not realizing like, <laughs> which that I was. you know, like I'm like little witch, like let's all masturbate. And I think it makes sense if we get in a circle, <laughs> you know, like at like eight years I old. love it. So, So, right. So I get married at 23 and I'm in a heterosexual monogamous marriage. And it wasn't until getting into clit talk that I realized that I had been suppressing my sexuality and my desire for being with the opposite sex, the same sex Mm -hmm. as myself uh, for a while. And there was a huge impact on my marriage from suppressing that. And I didn't even know, like, I didn't even know that that was the source of a lot of my early marital issues in my relationship wow. was just pressing the, the, the gay me within me, you know? So, so now just to share several years later, I've been in a, an ethical non-monogamous marriage. Okay. Um, sometimes that looks like we're po- in a poly phase. Sometimes like it's kind of straight up swinging. Sometimes mm-hmm. like I'm just we're just, uh, uh, we're, we're doing BDSM in community with other mm-hmm. BDSM folks, like non-monogamous, I would say is the umbrella term that I'd use here. Okay. So that's my journey. My biggest transformation is really coming out in my marriage once already married. Wow. No, that's, that's big. And having him accept it and then get out in, in probably that helped him access some elements in his self that maybe he was suppressing too. Oh, he's living his best life now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we go to play party because <laughs> he's gotten to have other lovers in our relationship. I keep living his best life. Yeah. It, it, it sounds like it healed some of those aspects that were problematic in your relationship, which is interesting because mo- most people would say, oh, okay, you open up to other people or other things. Does it cause more problems? But no, not necessarily. That can, that can be better and beneficial. You know, one of my best friends was in a very open relationship and that was one of the the best things that he could have done for their relationship, you know? Yeah. I, I, I think, would always, I think any, I just want to add like any, I think something firmly that the three of us believe is that anything is possible in communication. Mm, yeah, exactly. And it's, I mean, this is at least what I have found speaking your truth even if it means a certain relationship might end or a certain chapter might close speaking our truth wins every day in the long run when it comes to fulfillment and long-term because otherwise you're just going to put it off for what, how many years and then be in the same fucking conversation three years later until you're finally ready to speak your truth. So we have to let go of the fear of what chapters or relationships might close as we live into our truth, which is something that we really do in our seven week coaching program, the sex and empowerment signature masterclass Mm -hmm. in community. Because once you Mm -hmm. recognize what your desires are, like I did, which was okay, having, ha- having yeah. a girlfriend in my marriage, that meant being able to accept that maybe my current relationship, like wasn't, wouldn't carry on. Luckily in my situation, it did. 
you know, yeah. but we can't be afraid of, of loss. Like if we're afraid of losing the people around us or, or our life as we know it, if we're afraid of, oh my God, what's going to happen? Life of, as I know it can change. And that's why we really focus on community because in community, like we can do anything as well, like yeah. with the support of, of community. Mm-hmm. No. And I, I mean, you say it so good and so well, like you, you can't be afraid to lose to gain what you really want, you know, and in it, it if, if it isn't in that vibration, if it isn't in, in that, it just means that that worked for that time period. It's like going on a vacation, then it's up for something new. Right. But yep. it's like, you ha- you have to continue to be true. And I mean, people wouldn't go to the store and buy the wrong size pants and take them and, 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 you know, even if they were the, the right, the right color, the right, the right, you know, cost the right, whatever, the right designer, whatever, if they're, if they're five sizes too big for you, you're not going to walk out of the store with them because they don't fit you right because they're not made to fit on your body. So why would you waste your time or energy or money or resources on that? Right. Mm. But you might find that you can alter the pants and then they can be the best pants for you. I don't know. Okay. I love <laughs> That's that. That's a good analogy. I love that. Yeah. It's like our, our, our mentor, Mama Jean always says, pleasure is your birthright. So why would you, why would you rather song wrong pants or be in the relationship that doesn't, that doesn't like support your pleasure, your yeah. authentic pleasure, not the pleasure you think the world wants you to have. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Let me, let me hear. What about you, Katie? What, what's your transformational story through this? Well, I, feel I mean, like you, I shared started, a, you, you shared, shared a little, a little bit. Little, yeah. I mean, I started a whole new chapter in my life for sure. Um, benefits in my life. I mean, when I first started clit talk and I first started getting in touch with my sexuality, I actually uncovered a lot of anger and mm. I had a lot of trauma to work through that I didn't even know existed in my body. Interesting. And, um, and what that really, when that started to open up, I started to have a really creative kind of explosion. I started creating things. I shot my first pilot. I raised money for it. I had my first baby. I like, I, I really stepped into my feminine power and um, really owning my voice and my truth in a way that like, I didn't even know that I didn't know, you know? Mm. And, um, and just having the opportunity to, to learn and I'm a registered nurse. So Mm -hmm. masturbation is a health conversation. I couldn't believe the trans, the physical transformation that happened in my body. And then I've, I definitely have a better sense of humor now. Yeah. (laughs) And, um, and I'm actually going to get my sex educator certification now so that I can be a certified educator in this, in this arena. And I'm just really excited to be able to contribute to people and really found, feel like I've found my like life's purpose. No, I mean, it's it definitely, that's what I was saying about all three of you before, like, you know, it, when it's in alignment, it just happens and it's in that flow. Now, for those that are listening, uh, Madison shared a lot of very specific things, you know, going in and starting to, uh, date women to create an openness and in, in their relationship to try these different um, experimental parties, other things, you know, so what were some of those factors of like, okay, you realized that you had this awareness of anger, but how did that come up for you? Like, was it, was it just, you know, did it just happen in a conversation? Was it through like the expression of touch? Like what was that? It was in the expression of touch. I, um, I was able, we had a guest, um, Marla Mervis Hartman on our show several times. And she, every time she came on, she really opened up a lot for me. So I was always very uncomfortable with public dis- displays of affection, even holding hands and emotional intimacy was mm. something that is, I will say is still something that I st- struggle with and have to consciously work on in my re- intimate relationships. And, um, especially, especially in the bedroom and being open and being willing to receive. And I was angry that I didn't mm. naturally receive pleasure mm. from a partner who is so willing to give me everything that I, that mm. I want. Wow. And I, um, I still struggle with it. And it's with, it's this, what Madison was talking about, about community holds me accountable to know that I'm worth it. Like Mm -hmm. my pleasure matters Yeah, because that'll be the first thing to go out the window because I'm a caretaker, 
right? Mm -hmm. Like I am actually a professional caretaker. Yeah. So I will, I would before always come last. I would get the scraps, you know? I didn't know that mm -hmm. though, but through doing this work, I'm like, gosh, I've really, really held myself back from having all the joys in life. And, and that made me really upset and angry. Yeah. And so being able to talk about it and being able to inspire other people so that they can see that within themselves so that their lives can completely transform like mine has, and that they get to continually work on it is, um, is such a privilege to be able to do now. And, um, and it keeps me going forward, I would say. And in so many different areas of your life too, because that oh, ability, yeah. like once you started practicing receiving and working through that anger, I'm, I'm sure that that's why it opened up that you could shoot your pilot, that you could do this, that you could explode in other areas because it, it's a link of self-worth, right? right? Of internal value. Okay. I, I'm good enough. I can, and I do deserve and whether that's pleasure or whether that is success or whether that is outward recognition or whether that is whatever, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. But it makes sense that they would, you know, explode together like that. Totally. And and becoming a mother is something that I was never going to do. Oh, really? I was, oh, yeah. oh, I was never having any kids. Ethan married me knowing that I may never have kids. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. So, and what changed your mind? What, what what was that paradigm shift that happened? I think it was my connection to my pussy. Like we talk about, really following, really starting to be able to listen to your pussy intuition. Like mm -hmm. Marla Mervis Hartman from Love Your Body, Love Yourself did this exercise. It's this straw exercise and it changed my life in so many <laughs> different ways. Okay. Um, but when you- I need to listen like, to this episode. <laughs> you, 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 I'll do it right now. It's like you okay. sip through a straw, like you feel your pussy open and contract. So all of your spongy tissue, all of your spongy holes in your whole body are erogenous zones and they're connected. So the fact that my mm. breath was connected to my, to my pussy helps me edge in sex, helps me really check in. If I'm having trouble making a decision, mm -hmm. I actually have learned and practiced to listen and check in with my body. Yeah, because my body knows more than my my analytical brain is is going to stop me from doing things. So I think that um, just through doing this work and I and I really just conquered a lot of fear and I think shedding a lot of that anger and really, you know, doing these things that I never thought I could do. I was like, I want to be a mom. And, and I was still afraid. I had so many conversations, so much therapy, so many boundaries. <laughs> and like, and, and I, and I just asked for everything that I wanted. And they're like, okay, okay. And now I'm on my second one. I love it. I love so, it. And it's the best thing I've ever done in my whole life. And, um, it's really probably the thing that I'll be most proud of at the end of my life, you know? So is my, is my son Cooper. And, um, so I love being a mom and, and I'm so grateful that I didn't deprive myself of that. Yeah. yeah. For me. No, I mean, it's, but I love it. Like, like hearing, hearing your stories and then we're going to get into you, Lindsay too, <laughs> um, is it just really shows how when you work on one area of your life, how so much is a domino effect and that you don't even know where you're going to go. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of what you guys are doing to help people deal with what, in my opinion, is one of the most shameful elements of somebody's life, right? You said, you know, like you came to and you found that there was shame or anger or suppressed hurt or whatever is going on, right? And then a lot of people, you know, mix sh uh, like love and intimacy with also heartbreak, right? You know, and so then they have that baggage that they carry with them from failed relationships or, or problems or embarrassments. And so 
it's like, if you can uncover that, you're really creating freedom. And from my point of view, that's what liberate stands for. Liberate yourself, like be the best yeah. self that you can be. Right. And that's what you are doing for, yeah. for everybody with having them have empowerment, empowering conversations and the ability to connect with their true sense of pleasure, identity, sexuality, sensuality, all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your body doesn't forget. No. Yeah. And your body doesn't lie. And it does keep count. And it will reveal things to you in this work when you're ready to hear it. Mm -hmm. And it's really been a remarkable experience just free falling into that and trusting myself and trusting who I surround myself with mm. and really believing in, in what inspires me. Mm -hmm. So thank you for, for asking. Yeah. So Lindsay, what about you? Let me hear your transformational. Yeah. I've, I've been, as, as the ladies have been sh sharing, I've been thinking about, you know, my life, you know, pre-clit talk and post-clit talk, you know, um, and I started the podcast, you know, like I said, there was shame there that I didn't realize was there. And I remember something that really came up for me that had a profound effect was when I was in high school, I mm -hmm. scored it for the first time. Okay. And I didn't know what it was. And the guy that I was with thought I peed in the bed and told everyone at school that I peed in the bed. Oh, wow. Yeah. Traumatic. And so I was basically shamed for my female orgasm, <laughs> what, mm -hmm. what form of the female orgasm. And, um, you know, it wasn't until clit talk came around that I actually even started to share that inside of what we call a compassion container mm -hmm. and was able to just be held in that story and to like move through that shame. It was so far suppressed that I didn't yeah. even, I didn't even think it bothered me. Yeah. You thought until, you moved on it. Beyond I thought it. I had moved on until it, until like Katie was mentioning my body, it came up, it was a visceral reaction. I, I was just so sad for that high school girl. And I was like, I do not want another girl to ever go th or through that experience. And it's our job to like shift this conversation and to provide people with that education because it's not fair. Um, no, it's and, not for, for, I mean, and that's what a lot of people try. I mean, people go to, you know, sex therapists and different types of training to try to be able to do that. You know, people spend right. a lot of money to learn to <laughs> yeah. do that, you know, exactly. so, so something that it was just so natural, you know, but you at just, that time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Another thing that, uh, you know, in the realm of education, something that was always really frustrating for me. So we did this podcast about the five different types of clits. Okay. And I have, there's small, medium, and large, hooded and unhooded. We did a whole episode. If you want more information, I have what's considered a small clit. So for the majority of my sexual experience, small clits have a tendency to go numb very easily because people are mm. applying too hard pressure. So I thought I couldn't come. I thought there was something wrong with me. I didn't know what to ask for. I didn't know how to masturbate because I was masturbating for the average of how you should masturbate, mm. right? Vibrators didn't work on me. And until I had that education and, you know, just a little hack out there for anyone who's listening and feels like you might be like me, clitoral sucker. I have two words for you, clitoral mm -hmm. sucker. <laughs> so it's, and it just suctions little air on it. And I needed softer pressure. And once I had yeah. that education, I knew what to ask for. And it totally transformed my sex life. And now I can have orgasms so easily. And it, again, it was just, there was no pleasure education for me. I didn't, I thought yeah. I was broken, you know, until, until I d realized I wasn't broken and all different types of clits require different stimulation. So, mm -hmm. you know, it would be really useful for everybody to know that you know, who interacts with a clit. <laughs> yeah, a yeah, absolutely. And for anybody that has one, because, yeah. you know, if they're like you and they yep. say, well, maybe I'm just, I'm, I, I just can't, or I I'm broken mm -hmm. in some way or whatever, you know, went on through your head. And many people share that, but yeah. I mean, I, you know, 
people need to be aware that we have different types of bodies. Yes. And just like there's not, I mean, it's, it's so interesting that on, on one level, people don't even question the fact that different diets are for different peoples. Right. <laughs> You know, it's like, of course, we have different bodies. So some people might need more protein or some people might need more of this mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. And you say, yeah, different diets work for different people. Yep. And you don't question it. Yeah. But why wouldn't different pleasure techniques or different types of pressure or stimulation for different body types? Right. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next thing that I I really uncovered in my clit talk journey was t- taboo. <laughs> okay. And and I'll t- I'm just going to tell you guys a little sassy story about myself. When I was in college, I it was music school, so the lines were very blurred. But I I was dating my college professor, and it, it, there was an age gap, and it was very taboo, and it really turned me on. And I didn't realize at the time that I was living out my fantasy, right? Mm. I am a, so there's five different, there's this thing called the erotic blueprint and there's five different sexual archetypes. Um, we've done plenty of episodes on that as well, but I am what's considered a kinky archetype. And okay. in college, I actually got to live out my fantasy, but the thing that, you know, I got to really discover what turns me on because you know, visual porn doesn't necessarily turn everyone on or it's perfect for someone. Everyone's different. So for me, I'm what's considered a cerebrally kinky person. So I like really taboo fantasies, like, like the babysitter fucking the dad, like, like in my mind, it's not, it's there's, and there's a real difference, right? Between fantasy and actual desire. I wouldn't actually want to do that. I mean, I'm, an adult woman. So I don't know who would hire me as a babysitter anyways at this point, but, (laughs) but, um, but you know, it's just in my mind and I want to act it out. I, you know, when I said to you at the beginning, we love to role play, I'm not kidding that, but it was, again, it was very shameful. And I felt very embarrassed for having those types of fantasies. Mm. And, and And I had to really move through something and I got really present to, well, if I'm not going to normalize it, who is? Yeah. And so I, I talk openly about it because there's no shame in fantasy, right? It's whatever turns you on, it's okay. And you just got to mm-hmm. find the right partner that's, you know, willing to pretend to be daddy or whatever works for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and so that, that comfortability that was, and that freedom. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, that speaks like volumes. I think there are so many people and probably so many people listening that you have these ideas, you have these taboo fantasies in your Mm -hmm. mind, but then you say, oh, because of society or because that's wrong or because that's this, you don't want to, you know, even share it, you know, and then that, then you're suppressing it. Then on some psychological level, you're telling yourself that you're wrong. Yeah. There's something wrong with you. It's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. You know, as long as you're not hurting anyone and you're being responsible and everyone's having fun, who cares? You know? Yeah. Um, and, and so, and, and even with my current partner, when I shared that it was uncomfortable for him, but through communication and through the tools, um, from our masterclass and the podcast, we were able to move through it and now he's into it. And, you know, when he wants to boss me around, he's just like, daddy says, do the dishes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we've made it something fun for us. Um, yeah. And then, um, Another thing that, you know, in the beginning of the show, I, I started off in a, a serious relationship. I was a stepmom. I was living with a, a man um, and he really crossed a lot of my boundaries. So I learned the power of consent and value-based boundaries. Mm. And, um, you know, one of my values is being a mother. And he flipped the script on me and crossed a lot of other boundaries <laughs> that you can hear about throughout the podcast. Okay. Um, and, um, and you know, it, it, the podcast really, and this sacred container taught me to stand up for myself mm-hmm. and be a demand that like, I deserve to have it all because yes. before I just, I was so codependent and so such a people pleaser that I, like Katie said, I put myself last. I, I put my, des- like my desires, like, what do you mean? I didn't even know what I wanted. Mm -hmm. But as I started to discover that I really put in some value-based boundaries and found that that relationship was not working for me. Um, and so, and then the next phase of the podcast is me single, (laughs) um, which was one of the most empowering experiences of my life because 
in the past when I had been single, I wanted to be um, the girl that didn't sleep with the guy on the first date. I really wanted to be the good girl, but that was not how it went this time. I was in my thirties and I was sexually empowered. There was no slut shaming involved. So you can hear all about my crazy sex capades and like burning man and uh, where I actually ended up meeting the love of my life. Um, mm. And he taught me because I knew what value-based boundaries to put in from the beginning. It's this relationship is so different. Um, and you know, in my old relationship, I guess I'll just share it. He, he basically, my old partner basically cheated on me and demanded we start going to sex parties. So I was brought into the world of sort of non-monogamy in a very traumatic way. Mm -hmm. and Instead of a very healthy way of where Madison yeah, did, you know? Exactly. And so my current partner recognized that I needed some healing. So Actually, at Burning Man, I had a threesome with two guys, which was really fun. <laughs> um, but and it just goes to show you. And then and then that leads me to where I am now. Um, I feel the freedom to be fluid, um, fluid on the Kinsey scale, fluid in the, you know, the scale of monogamy. And to be honest, and to use a term that we love to use, vulnerageous, which is vulnerably courageous. We use it a lot. <laughs> Hashtag to Mikey B, one of our guests. Um I feel like it's okay. I'm allowed. I feel the freedom to be fluid. I don't have to put myself in a box or answer to anyone. And I'm allowed to see what's right for me. And I'm still in the discovery of those conversations. Like, where am I on the Kinsey scale? Where am I on the monogamy scale? My partner, we're, we're in a fluid motion. And, you know, one of our guests, um, Elizabeth April, she said, you know, the future is fluid. And I, that just made such a difference for me. And I was like, okay, I'm, I don't have to have it all figured out. Yeah. I'm allowed to be in conversation, even with myself, even with all these tools. Well, and you're always changing. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, exactly. You know, so I mean, even with where you are and being in congruence with yourself today might be a very different vibration in, in a space that you are in one month from now, one year from now, 10 years from now, you know, because exactly. we change. Yep. But the, the, the thing that I love most about all of your stories is that it was a journey towards freedom of just being your authentic you, you know, yep. and it, it's, it's like, it's like, and you did so in a way that like a lot of people say, oh yeah, I found, you know, eat, eat, pray, love type of, of mindset. I went on this journey and I read these self-help books so that I discovered myself. And maybe that works for some people, but you did it from really like exploring your body, your sensations, your sexuality, your mm -hmm. truth, your wounds, your cores, the things work through them, right? Heal, mm -hmm. transform. But also I think that what I'm hearing from each of you is a profound ability to communicate, mm. you know, because even in the face of, of explaining to, you know, your partners or other people in your life, even when you were first faced with adversity, like there was, you somehow allowed them to understand where you're coming from, right? So do you have any advice for people on how to, you know, cause you all do communication coaching too, you know, so mm -hmm. how to have, if somebody is listening and they, they feel that maybe one of their biggest blocks is communicating to their partner, communicating to people in life, what their needs are, what their wants are, their desires. What are some first steps that people can make? <laughs> do, do our masterclass. <laughs> yes. That is our masterclass. That's, yeah. that's, 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 that is our masterclass. Yeah. Communication Definitely. and desire mapping. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sign up for our wait list, which is hmm. clittalkshow.com backslash wait list. Yep. We do it okay. once a year. I will also yeah. say for our, we, we are pleasure researchers. We have been doing this for, we have interviewed over 150 people in the sex positive and pleasure positive industry. So we've created the best of the best highlight reel in a free gift that we have available yeah. to everyone, which is the best of the best over 200 episodes. So we'll save you the time of going through our show and like finding the best. We've, we've created it for you. You can go to clittalkshow.com backslash guide for that one. Mm -hmm. That's our clip talk clip yep. notes. And I want to say yeah, that. Yeah, I read about that. I was like, I was like, how cute yeah. is that? Clip talk clip. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Clip. It is. <laughs> puns <laughs> are absolutely endless at clip talk. We, we, we live from our puns. We do live. We do and have acronyms. Puns. Yeah. But I just want to say that if you want to get, you want to get masterful at communication, then start talking about your sex life. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, so the three of us met, we did, 
we did two years of communication coaching. So we are your sex and empowerment communication coaches. And, you know, as Lindsay shared in the beginning of the show that even with all this transformational world work and also the communication work we've done, there was still this area, this missing piece for all of us, which was addressing it through the lens of our sexuality. So I'm mm. really not kidding. If you want to have a breakthrough in your communication, the second you can start to talk about sex and sexuality more openly now travel plans and coordinating logistics or, you know, talking to the in-laws about coordinating, you know, when you're coming over for Easter brunch is easy fucking peasy. Cause once you can talk about sex, you can talk about fucking anything. Yeah. And I would also say, and this is in our clip talk cliff notes is that self-pleasure is self-love. So mm -hmm. if you don't have a self-pleasure or a masturbation practice or a connection with your body mm -hmm. on the regular, I would start there. Yeah. Even if it's just cupping your hand over your clothes on your sex center mm. and breathing. Yeah. And then maybe journaling a little bit afterwards yeah. for what, what thoughts came up. If you're not comfortable communicating that yet, you will in our community because we pair everyone up and they have their pleasure partners and it's the most beautiful relationships you've ever seen. Oh my God. And, um, but that, but that response. is a place <laughs> that anyone listening right now to start. I love that. Now with that, in you pairing people up, do, is your masterclass, is that something that people do as do they, can they do it in a, in a coupled sense or is it mostly just individuals yeah. and you pair them up with anybody that is Any, the vibration? It can be couples. It can be people solo. It can be men. It can be women. It can be non-binary. It is open to everybody. It's pretty clit centric, but yeah, we are open to everyone. Yeah. And all of our participants have currently been women and they are, we've asked them actually multiple times. They're like, yes, everyone here, I think can benefit from this work. So mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And so when, when it's a, I, so I know that you are going to start doing some work with us over at Liberate mm -hmm. and, um, you know, depending on when people are listening to this, I mean, April 16th is around the corner. We'll have this out and uh, definitely a time for that. But I mean, if you're listening to this after, um, hopefully you continue to do, uh, workshops, classes, talks with us, as well as you have other ones. So I know that what you're doing at Liberate, you do other places now mm -hmm. on your, on your clit talk show, uh, dot com is that where they would find information on all of the different talks workshops your master class all of that or where can they go for that yeah i mean honestly i would say the best resource to like stay in regular touch with us is to um start listening to the podcast we have a it's it's free it comes out every week sign up for the free guide then you'll be the first to know anytime we do any sort of workshop or anything like that. The majority of our work is online. So it's very convenient mm -hmm. for people. We do have a couple of really cool opportunities coming up later this year. Um, so if you're listening to this later in 2022, don't worry, we have some really cool stuff coming up in the fall, some free, mm -hmm. um, free online masterclasses. We do a free five day. We have a lot of free resources, but I would say just start listening to the podcast, um, getting to know us. Um, been, we have a lot of people. Yeah. And get on our newsletter. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when you go to our website to clittalkshow.com, you'll be offered this free gift. All you have to do is put your email in and you yep. will, you will, it will be hard for you to not, not hear from us. We keep, in touch <laughs> but we don't spam. We, we do not we spam. We're classy. Yeah. yeah. We keep it and, you, <laughs> and you have a lot of valuable information to share to people that help transform their life. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. If there's anything else that you would like to share before we wrap up today, I'd like to hear maybe final comments or words from each of you. <sighs> Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited to start collaborating with Liberate and really getting involved in your community. Um, it's, it's such an interesting perspective to be on the other side of being interviewed. So I really appreciate all your questions and yeah, yeah. self exploration that it brings up. Yeah. I would say if you're listening or watching this right now, and there is a, a little voice inside of you that is saying, Hmm, maybe there's something there for me. Allow yourself to explore that join us in this community. I promise you will be held by us. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Amen to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madison. Anything you want to leave us with before we wrap up today? Yeah, that, me on the spot. that my that that my version of eat, pray, love is eat, pray, pussy. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> or eat, pussy, pray. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for the privilege for us to share our message and our clip commitments with your platform and community. And yeah. So excited for the continued collaboration in the upcoming event called Let's Talk About Sex on April 16th. Oh yeah, it's going to be super fun. Come to that. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you ladies so much. It's been a pleasure and I know our audience is going to enjoy all of this content and hopefully get a lot of new people listening to some of your old podcasts and your new ones yeah. coming up. Thank you so much. And until next time, talk to you later. Bye. Looking forward to Bye. seeing you and meeting you all in person. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Same. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.